Alright guys, so I've decided to update my dash cam for my Range Rover. So I went ahead and purchased this from Amazon myself. This is the Hupecos 360 degree four channel dash cam. I'm gonna go ahead and unbox this, showcase how it looks, some of the specifications, and give you some sample footage in both daytime and nighttime of each of the four different channels. So let's go ahead and open this up. So there you have the user manual, I believe it's called the V80 model. This actually comes in at 250 pounds. There was a 50 pound voucher, so I got it for 200 pounds. So check out the link in the description if you wanna find out more information and maybe take a look at purchasing it yourself. You've got a couple of sticky pads that you will use for the back camera and the front camera itself. So inside the accessories box, comes with one packet here, which has five wire tidy sticky pads and a wire tool to put in the edges of your roof and sides of your car. So you have a USB-C powered power cable, which I thought there would be an option to have one that goes to a USB port rather than the 12 volt power port in your car. Doesn't seem like that's the case. So you'll have to connect it via this to power it on. You have yourself the back camera, which will plug into a 3.5 millimeter jack port on the main dash cam. Has a couple of sticky pads in there to connect to the back of this like so. And then you also have the windshield attachment. So those are the cables and the accessories. So let's take a look at the actual dash cam. So there you have it. Got a nice large LCD screen there on the front. A few buttons there, mode, power button, left and right directional buttons, an okay button. I'll take a look at the user guide just to see what all of these buttons do and we'll try it out once I've set it up in the car. And it actually looks pretty cool. These actually rotate. So when you want to get the left and the right views, then you can actually position them accordingly. If you want to face them a little bit towards the cabin, then you have the option to adjust it like that. There is the main camera on the back. Let's take off the sticky pad on this. There you go. It says there ultra wide angle lens, full HD digital recorder. The front facing camera is 4K and the left and the right and the back cameras are 1080p native resolution. Now along the top, you have the USB-C power port there. The SD card, I believe it actually comes with one as part of the package from Amazon. This is a Lexa 128 gigabyte micro SD, which is quite nice that they do supply it rather than you having to buy one separately. Then you have the port for the back camera and there is the microphone. There's a microphone in here as well because this actually allows you to speak to this device and give voice commands. And we'll be testing it out and they include take photo, start video, turn on or off audio, turn on or off Wi-Fi, turn on and off the screen. This also has built-in faster five gigahertz Wi-Fi, which I think is really good. And it does have GPS tracking as well, which is accommodated with an app that you can download by scanning the QR code in the user manual. This also has something called Super Night Vision. It does loop recording and it also does speed tracking. Those are the key highlights and specifications. So pretty standard. We're gonna try out everything. I'm not hardwiring this to my car itself to give 24 seven parking monitoring or anything like that. But for a standard dash cam that will give me a 360 degree vision of loop recording, that's one of the things I was looking out for. And this seemed to have decent reviews online. So I will be testing that out myself. So let's go ahead, head out to the car and set this up. Okay, so I've got it set up. The first thing you'll notice is that this is on sort of a tilted angle. It's not completely straight. I don't know if this is a design fault, but the actual cables themselves, they actually get caught trapped. And that's primarily due to the windshield mount being directly over where the ports need to go, which is not a great design, but that's not too much of an issue because the actual cameras themselves, they can be tilted from sideways and left and right to make sure they look absolutely straight once you are viewing the live video. So let's take a look. I've got the back camera also connected. So I've got all four channels covered. When you hit the OK menu, you can go through these options here. So you've got Wi-Fi, infrared, loop record, G sensor, parking, language, screensaver, clocks, format the card and reset. If you go to the next page, you've got your GPS status, speed adjust, speed unit. Let me go ahead to the unit. Mine is in miles per hour, but you can also change it to kilometers per hour. Then you also have the time zone. Let's go ahead, change that. So I'm in BST, so that will be GMT plus one. Hit OK. And then if I wanted to go into daylight savings, then I can turn that on or off from here. So that's all of the 
menu options. Then you can also go into the dash cam and play back the footage directly from here. Go to voice control, dashboard, and settings. Let's go ahead and check out voice control. So these are all of the different commands. Going to see if these work. Turn off screen. Turn on screen. Okay, that was pretty instantaneous. Show front camera. Show both camera. Oh, this is pretty nice actually. The voice commands, I'm actually very impressed with that. That works quickly, it's quite instant, and it actually does exactly what you say. So you've got all of the key information just there as well, date and time, etc. So I think it's looking good. Let's just quickly check out some of these other options. So if you go into playback, you can actually play back from either of the cameras, I believe, front and rear most likely. Okay, now let's go over to dashboard. And this is actually quite nice. It gives you a little speedometer there and a little animation with your miles per hour as you're driving. So you can actually just leave it on this dashboard rather than seeing any live view, which I think is quite nice. So left, right, front, back, I think it's pretty nice. One thing I would say is I've positioned this in a way that it doesn't really block my windscreen view when I'm driving. So that's why a bit of the mirror and this large compartment that's in my Range Rover Velar, it does block the right camera a little bit. I don't know if you guys can see that clearly. But I can still see a little bit of the window outside to the right side. This is an issue just for myself because of the position that I've put it in. But just note that when you do reposition this, it is actually quite bulky and it may block and obstruct a little bit of the view on the road ahead of you. So you have to remember to position this in a way where it doesn't really do that. And I can still see a little bit of my right side, but because of the way I've positioned it, it does get maybe 20 or 25% blocked but for me that's not too much of an issue. So now let's go ahead and take some sample footage in both daytime and nighttime and see how each of these four channels come out. I'm going to download it via the app, the TS Cam app that comes with this device that you can see in the user manual and I think that's going to be a lot easier to do than taking the SD card out because the position where the SD card is at the top there is going to be very awkward. You're going to have to fiddle around with the cables, maybe move it out, maybe just take the dash cam off. So it's a bit of a pain, so it's better to just download directly from the app, which I'll do. So we'll showcase the app, how that looks as well. And let's just get straight into that. Okay, so now let's talk through the app and see how that works. I'm just gonna show you the QR codes here in case you wanted to pause the video and check out the app on either the iOS or the Google Play Store. So we'll dive in and just remember that you need to have the dash cam powered on and you need to be in your car connected to the dash cam Wi-Fi for the app to work. Okay, so this is the app. This is how you will see it first and you'll see the front camera as the main view. There's a little switch button just next to where it says picture quality description. This is where you can switch between all of the four cameras. So if you press that, I can go to the back, press it again, you go to the left hand side and then to the right hand side. So very quick and responsive live view. And then when you press it again, you go back to the front. If you go into the storage option that was on the bottom left, here you'll see all of your clips that the dashcam has recorded. Very quick and easy to play back any of the footage. You have a few tabs there, emergency, parking, monitoring, and photos. If you select, you can select multiple videos like this, and you'll be able to download them directly to your phone's gallery, which is a quick and convenient way to take backups of all of your videos that the dash cam has recorded, rather than you having to take the SD card out and transferring it to your laptop. So this can take some time. The front camera is 4K, so it is going to be slightly larger file size than the rest of them. But as you can see, it is downloading pretty quickly and you can get them stored very quickly on your phone. So that is a very quick and convenient way just to take videos and store them as backups and play it back whenever you like. There you go, the download has completed and it was straightforward. When you go back, you can stop recording and go into the device settings and take a look at some of the options there. So pretty straightforward. Everything you basically need from a dash cam app, it was simple to connect and I didn't have any problems using this and I connected the first time as well. So not overly complicated, it's very nice and it's very easy to use. So for me, I would give it a thumbs up. So now let's take a look at some sample footage that I've taken in both daytime and nighttime. Okay, so let's start with the daytime footage and I'll just show you a quick full screen view of all the cameras, starting with the front camera. So 
So here's all of them side by side and actually you can see the biggest difference in quality with the front 4K camera than all the others. It is really clear and you can read the road signs and more importantly the license plates very clearly. The left camera has good visibility out of the window and although my setup for the right camera is partially obstructed it still looks good. Back camera seems like the lowest quality but any car right behind me the license plates are still easily readable. So let's see how the audio quality comes out with the internal mic on the dash cam. This is how the audio appears. So I'm just talking normally in the car and testing out the microphone from this dash cam. So hopefully you guys can hear me quite clearly. It's pretty quiet, it's not so great, so if you're having a conversation with someone out of your window, I don't think you'd be able to hear the person on the outside at all. So moving on to night recordings, and again, starting with a quick full screen cycle through all four channels. Now you'll notice the left and right camera here are on infrared night mode, but we'll talk about that in a second. The back camera however is quite grainy and I think it might even be 720p let alone 1080. Okay so talking about the difference in night mode quality for each of these channels, the front is still clear but my sharp LED lights reflecting on other license plates makes it hard to read those license plates but that would be the case with any dash cam to be honest. But the roads and the buildings are very clear so can't fault on the front camera's quality overall. The left and right cameras, you'll notice they switch between infrared night mode and color night vision intermittently. This is because when I drive through dark areas, there isn't much light sources for the dash cam to capture to be able to accurately get color vision. So it switches to infrared mode, which I think is actually quite good because it then tries to maintain visible scenes throughout your entire ride. So what that means is that just in case you do have an accident, it will have some form of clarity on how those events unfolded. And finally, the back camera maintains color vision throughout, but due to poor lighting, reflections, and maybe due to the demister lines on my rear windscreen, the quality isn't great at night, but I would say it's manageable. So that's all I wanted to showcase on the Hupecos 360 dash cam. All in all, I'm happy with the purchase and for £200, I think it's definitely worth having this 360 degree setup that does everything you need it to do. As always, remember to like, subscribe and catch you at the next one.